Well, we agree it may seem a little backwards to you, but let's now go to Washington so you can also get the flavor of the day. President Clinton, President Bush, President Ford, and President Carter all involved. Here's ABC's Brit Hume. For a president accused of not getting out the big artillery in support of the North American Trade Agreement, how about this? Down the hall to the White House East Room, he came with three of his predecessors in tow. They were there for the signing of side deals to the trade agreement. But the real effort by Mr. Clinton today was to say to doubters that he's prepared to fight for the treaty, which is in trouble in Congress. It will be a hard fight, and I expect to be there with all of you every step of the way. The president tried to allay the fear fueled by the agreement's opponents that it will result in the loss of millions of American jobs to Mexico. Every single solitary thing you hear people talk about that they're worried about can happen whether this trade agreement passes or not, and most of them will be made worse if it fails. And I can tell you it'll be better if it passes. Mr. Bush, whose administration negotiated the deal, said failure to ratify it would smack of anti-Mexican bias in the U.S. And if we fail, the losers will be those in South America, not just in Mexico, who want better relations with us. And the biggest loser, of course, in my view, will be the good old uh, USA. President Carter, without mentioning him by name, strongly attacked Ross Perot, who's been leading a campaign against the treaty. We have a demagogue who has unlimited financial resources and who is extremely careless with the truth, who is preying on the fears and the uncertainties of the American public. And, and this must be met. Gerald Ford warned Congress the treaty's failure would intensify the stream of illegal Mexican aliens crossing the U.S. border. Don't gamble. If you defeat NAFTA, you have to share the responsibility for increased immigration to the United States where they want jobs that are presently being held by Americans. The White House hoped that this unusual display of bipartisan presidential unity would convince Republicans whose support they must have that Mr. Clinton is fully behind the treaty. And the Republicans seemed convinced. I, I think the president made it so clear today on his commitment, there's no, no, no turning back. The treaty's opponents have been on the attack for months and it would not pass Congress today. Still, this was an extraordinary day and a reminder that when it comes to political debate, there is no stage to equal the one here. Rick Hume, ABC News, the White House.